Welcome back. Let's get into saturation tables. Before we actually start looking at the tables, let's draw our favorite vapor dome drawing. Now, remember the vapor dome? We've got this constant pressure line or the isobar right here. And where this isobar intersects the vapor dome right here, we're going to call that point F. This point over here is G. Okay. Now this one at F, this is where we had saturated liquid. So remember if we have the term saturation or saturated, that means we're about to have a phase change. So this is where we still had liquid water, but it is just about to start to vaporize. Okay. So boiling is about to start. Now over here at G, we've got saturated vapor. So at this point, all of your liquid water will be gone and all you have is vapor. Now if you continue to add heat, you're going to have a superheated vapor. If you were to reduce heat or cool things off, you're going to start condensation. So you're going to return back to liquid water. Okay. So again, remember saturated is just indicating you are about to have some sort of phase change. We also talked about a term called quality, if you remember. And quality was just a measure of the water vapor in your mixture. So at this point, if we have saturated liquid, we still have all liquid. So here, X is going to be zero. Okay. Inside here, where we have the liquid vapor mixture, X is going to be greater than zero, but less than one. And then finally over here, we have all vapor, so X is going to be 1, okay? So I just wanted to remind you of that vapor dome because it will help you a little bit when we get to the tables. Now, the tables that we're going to be looking at in the Moran book are tables A2 and A3. Now, let me show you what those look like. So here is table A2. So this is what it looks like. Notice it says we've got saturated water and liquid vapor. So you know this is for that vapor dome because you have a liquid vapor mixture. And it's called the temperature table. The reason why this is called the temperature table is because we have the temperature in this first column here. Then it's followed by pressure in bar. Here's your conversions if you need to convert to a different unit. And after that, we've got specific volume, internal energy, something called enthalpy, and then something called entropy. These last two terms we will cover later on. Right now we're going to focus on specific volume and internal energy. Now if you look here, you've got saturated liquid. So this is the specific volume at that F point on the vapor dome. Okay, and notice again, this is one of those where we have V times 10 to the third. So if you were to use this number, you need to divide it by 1000 to have the actual specific volume. Now in this one to the right, this is VG. Okay, so this is your specific volume at the G point where you have saturated vapor. Okay, so that's what these tables give you. It gives you the values of specific volume and your specific internal energy at those F and G points on the vapor dome. Okay, so keep that in mind. So this is the temperature table and it's continued over here so you get up to a final temperature of 374.14 okay and then the pressure table that's going to be table a3 this is the same data except for now our first column is pressure so now pressure has the nice numbers and then temperature is in the second column okay so depending on what data you want to look up that's going to determine if you want to use the temperature table or the pressure table. Everything else in here is going to be the same though. You still got specific volume, your internal energy, etc. And these columns are for the F and G 
points in that vapor dome drawing. All right. So these are the ones you'll use if you've got a liquid vapor mixture. Okay. Now let's let me get these put up. And then before we go further into our examples, we need to do a couple of other things. All right, we need to find total volume. Let's look at that. So our total volume for our mixture is going to be the volume of the liquid plus the volume of the vapor. All right, so total volume. Now what we want to do is we need to find specific volume because we're not always going to be at that F and G point. Okay, so let's say that we want, let's say we have this vapor dome. Let's say we're at this point right here. Okay, we want to know what V is. What is, the table doesn't give us this. The table gives us the data at this point, so VF, and over here at this point, so VG. It doesn't give us V where we are located. All right, so we need a way to figure that out. So that's what we're going to, what we're going to develop right now. We're going to take uh, our volume that we just calculated and we're going to get specific volume by doing V over M. All right, so that's just volume over mass. And now if you plug in your equation for V, we're going to have the liquid of, or the volume of the liquid over M plus volume of the vapor over M. All right, and remember your M here is going to be your total mass. So M is going to be the mass of the liquid plus the mass of the vapor. Now we also know that the volume of the liquid can be written as the mass of the liquid times the specific volume at point F. Okay. So now we've got this equation too that we can use. And we can do the same thing for the vapor. So now for the vapor, that volume, we could write that as M for the vapor times VG. Now think about why you can do that. So essentially this is just using this equation, right? But we're saying our volume of the liquid is equal to the mass of the liquid times VF. Now why would we want to use VF? because at that point we have 100% liquid water, right? So that's our specific volume when we have 100% liquid. This one over here, we're doing vapor. We're gonna use G, because remember that's this point. This is the point where we have 100% vapor, okay? So that'll help us find the volume of the vapor. Now let's put all that together and then we'll have our specific volume is equal to the mass of the liquid over the total mass times VF plus mass of the vapor over the total mass times VG. And let's call this equation one. So we just made some substitutions. That's all we did there. And if we go back to quality, that was that X term we talked about before. Remember quality was the mass of the vapor over the total mass M. Okay. Now we've got that. Now we could rewrite that and say mass of the liquid over the total mass is 1 minus x. Right. So Remember your quality number goes from zero to one. So one would be your highest number. Now with these established, we can look at equation one again, which is this one right here. And we can write that the specific volume is gonna equal one minus X times VF plus X times VG. And that's just plugging in these relationships we just had. And now we can simplify that and say that that gives us an equation of VF 
plus x times vg minus vf. And this will be the main one that we're going to use. All right. We're going to use this thing all the time. And the reason for that is, is because this is going to allow us to figure out what v is at any point on this line inside the vapor dome when we've got a liquid vapor mixture. All right. So this is going to be a really important equation. Now you have to have quality to get it, but we'll work through that when we get there. Okay, so keep that in mind. And let's see, now let's, let's talk about one more thing before we get to the examples. Let's draw another vapor dome. There's a lot of information you can put on these vapor domes. And let's put our isobar. Now let's relate this to the F and G points. So let's look at V here. This was F, this was G. Okay. Now remember, over here, this V, if we're over at this point, right here for example, V is going to be less than VF. And over here on this right side, if we're up in here somewhere, our V has got to be greater than VG. And then in here, our V is going to be between VF and VG. All right. So technically on this line, it could also equal VF and then VG. So however you want to think about it. Now, We've got that. Remember, this was superheated vapor. Over here, if you're down in here, you've got compressed liquid. So this is going to help us figure out what table to use. Inside here, you've got liquid vapor. So you've got that mixture. And then up here at this top point, that's the critical point. So remember, that's where you could have uh, you can still have the liquid and vapor together, but these are the max temperature and pressure points where that can happen. And these are found in the table. Okay. Let's stop there. The next video is going to be all examples. Okay, so we're going to do quite a few examples on this, and I'll go through and show you how to figure out which table to use. All right. Have a great, have a great day. I will see you guys next time.